I had put weight on as a teenager and didn't like it. And I think it all went back to my first trip in 1991 to Thailand. And I was on this kind of, this journey to lose weight. And all you ever heard was fat is flavor, fat is flavor. And we believed that, I believed it. So I thought, oh, well, I'm never gonna have anything nice if I can't have any flavor. And then I had this Thai Tom Yum Gun soup, which is bursting with flavor and there's zero fat in it. And I was like, oh no, actually, you can get it from herbs and spices and I started cooking for myself with the right method and came up with these dishes that I thought were a little bit more exciting and over a period of three years I lost about 65 pounds and I didn't know that would last, I didn't know that would mean anything but during that space I loved to cook and I really felt at the end of this kind of challenge that I wanted to help people, I wanted to share the information I'd learned and really wanted to make it about the food not just the method. So I grew up in England and my mum was a fabulous cook and it was all home cooked dinners, uh, I've got two older brothers and uh, real family life in a suburb of London and uh, always had a, a love of cooking but never thought that would be a career. I'm Daniel Green and I'm on a mission to find the origins of some of the world's most popular and iconic dishes. So I was doing cooking and travel shows in England. I was doing things on Discovery Health and everything was about healthy eating and I had done some travel shows for BBC. I did two series as a judge on Food Network. I loved that. The first was uh, Kitchen Inferno with Curtis Stone and then I was on a panel called Food Fortunes which was a bit like Shark Tank for food. Loved that. I uh, found it very easy being a judge because being the other side when you're cooking is the hard thing. When you're sitting there as a judge, it's quite easy. We may be tough on you today because you brought no food. Where's the food? We need to butter us up a little bit. And I had an American agent in New York. One day they said, oh, there's this company in Minnesota and they're looking for someone with a chef background that could be a host. And I thought, well, I'm 34, I married to my wife Jane and we had our little girl Eleanor was uh, almost two years old. I thought, well, I wonder what this could be. This could be interesting. And we really looked at it as a one year stop. So I came over to Minnesota. They did bring me out in May which was a beautiful time of year. I didn't research it. There was no Google in those days to say what's the weather like in January. <laughs> and um, we did fall in love with the place. This is what brought me to Minnesota 15 years ago. The company used to be called Shop NBC. It's now Shop HQ. Let me show you around. We can jump in here. Careful, there's a step here. This is where I spend the majority of my time in this studio. So in here is where everything happens. It's the control room. I get to hear what's going on on the show, but you've got to see this. It's really impressive. Get to see all the screens that's on. This is the live show. Directors, producers behind. It's kind of the heartbeat of everything that goes on in this show. So really, always a very busy area, 24 hours a day. And a lot of people don't know this, right just in the suburbs of Minneapolis and Eden Prairie is the third biggest shopping network in the world, which is kind of amazing. We broadcast at 89 million homes right here. If I'd done some live TV in England, I used to do a show on uh, the equivalent to England's food network called UK Food. And there was an hour long show that I used to co-host. So I had some experience in live, but selling was very different. Selling was something I wasn't used to. Most people in TV, they're on for 10 minutes, half an hour, maybe an hour, but we do three, four hour blocks in a go. Uh, so it was a very different kind of animal of live TV, but I, I fell in love with it. They brought me in to mainly do cooking shows and do the live shows of pots and pans and everything in the kitchen. But because I was a full-time host, I did everything. So someone asked me, I bet you've sold everything but the kitchen sink. And no, actually, I do remember <laughs> selling a kitchen sink. It was a vanity, so close to it. And when I'm not doing that, yes, I travel a lot, but I like Minnesota because 
Nowhere's near, but nowhere's far. So if I do LA, it's three hours. If I do Florida, it's three hours. New York is two hours. So I feel it's quite a lucky place to be in the fact you can really go anywhere in a day or two days, and that can be back with the family. Uh, we moved here uh, 15 years ago. We didn't think this was our life. This is where we were staying. And then uh, we had our little girl Georgie here six years ago. And we thought, well, this is really where we want to uh, call home. And that was a very good decision. You know, cooking for me has predominantly been about how can I maintain a good weight loss or stay at a good uh, regime and how can I give to others ideas on how they could maybe lose weight or at least have a, a healthy lifestyle. You know, 15 years ago you didn't find Tom Yum paste in a grocery store, you didn't find, find Thai red curry paste in your local supermarket. Now I can walk into a cup and find all these different ingredients and I always do like to do that wherever I am, uh, try and adapt to what's available. I don't try and complicate food, you know, I'm not making it for a five-star restaurant. I'm making it at home or I'm making it for a book or I'm doing it on TV, which is a simple, easy step, which is maybe three, four ingredients and five minutes to do it. I think that's kind of my, my uh, answer to cooking is if you do it easy enough, you'll keep doing it. If you make it complicated, you'll do it once a year. For me, it starts with how can I adapt something that tastes really good that if I eat it is really good for me too. So I'm going to make a dish that really was one of my first to make from the Far East that was surprisingly easy. It's a Thai red curry. Thai food is all about salty, um, sweet, spicy, all these different fragrances and flavors that come in. You can actually make this in about three to four minutes from start to finish. What I want to do is put the curry paste into the pan and just burn it off a little. And I'm gonna break it down with a wooden spoon and just get that a tiny bit with no oil, nothing, just into getting that flavor that the aroma's really hitting the kitchen. Um, if you've got a coconut milk, add that. Then what I'll do is just gradually incorporate and mix it together. And as I do that, the flavors will really blend in and it becomes this creamy, wonderful, mix of Thai flavors. And then fish sauce. Now you don't have to use a fish sauce, but if you can, it really is the balance of Thai food. I'm only adding a dash, a couple of drops. Now you have to add a little bit of sweet. It's imperative. Normally it's white sugar or a brown sugar in a Thai curry. And I love using maple syrup because it really gives a natural sweetness and it's on paleo if you're on that and it's on keto if you follow that, uh, but also it's from here in Minnesota. I'm gonna add to that the shrimp. Then I'm gonna add some spinach. I'm gonna give a little sprinkle of dried cilantro and then hot Thai red curry served with a little bit of jasmine rice. Takes me all the way back to Bangkok, but with a little influence of Minnesota. Postcards is made possible by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. Additional support provided by Margaret A. Cargill Philanthropies. Mark and Margaret Yakel Julien on behalf of Shalom Hill Farms, a retreat and conference center in a prairie setting near Wyndham, Minnesota, on the web at shalomhillfarm.org. Alexandria, Minnesota, a year-round destination with hundreds of lakes, trails, and attractions for memorable vacations and events. More information at explorealex.com. The Lake Region Arts Council's Arts Calendar, an arts and cultural heritage funded digital calendar showcasing upcoming art events and opportunities for artists in West Central Minnesota, on the web at lrac4calendar.org. Playing today's new music plus your favorite hits, 96.7 Cram, online at 967cram.com.